Hello and welcome to the intro session on data sufficiency. I am Ravi Handa and my Twitter handle is at the rate Ravi Handa. My email ID is ravihanda at gmail.com. You can use these to connect with me and to provide feedback. Now please note that this is a very basic session on data sufficiency. It is an introductory session. We will try and discuss the basics of data sufficiency. We will not be discussing difficult problems or the kind of problems that might be asked in the exam. This particular video, this particular session is purely for understanding what data sufficiency is. It is for understanding how to approach data sufficiency problems and obviously how to solve them. So let's begin. The first part is what exactly is indeed data sufficiency? A data sufficiency question will consist of three parts. The first part will be the instructions. The instructions will tell you what to mark. There will be some information which will be given in the question. Based upon that, you'll have to mark one or mark two or mark three or mark four or maybe it is a five option thing. We'll see the instructions in the later part of the video. It will also include a question. The question can be with data. The question can be without data. It will also include two statements, which obviously will have data. There is no doubt about it. But the key is, is the data sufficient enough to answer the question that you have here? It may be sufficient. It may not be sufficient. And that is what you have to figure out in data sufficiency questions. You don't have to find out the answer. I repeat, you do not have to find out the answer. All you need to do is figure out whether the given data is enough to find out the answer or not. Confused? Well, that is why I have a few examples to clarify these ideas. Let's look at something really, really simple. What is the value of X? My one statement says that X is less than 10. Can you solve the question with just this information? X is less than 10. No, you can't. Statement B says X is greater than 8. Can you solve it with just statement B? No, once again, you can't because there are plenty of values which are greater than 8. There are plenty of values which are less than 10. So individually with these statements, you cannot solve the question. But a very important but is that if you combine these two statements, you get X as something between 8 and 10. Does that mean X is equal to 9? Do you have an answer now? Well, if you think the what you if you are thinking yes, if you are thinking X is equal to 9 is the answer, well, you are wrong. Nowhere does it say that X has to be a natural number or an integer. X could very well be 8.1, it could very well be 8.2, it could very well be 9.9999. So where do you have an answer? Finding out an answer or finding out the value of X means that you should be able to determine a unique answer. Can you get a unique answer here? No, you can't. And that is the reason why you cannot solve it this way. Now let's look at very similar example, but there is some extra information here that X is an integer. Now, if X is an integer, what does that tell me? The very same thing that X lies between 8 and 10. Obviously, you cannot do it from these statements alone. But now you have X is equal to 9. And now you have the answer because between 8 and 10, there is only one integer and that X is equal to 9 is indeed your answer. So that is the idea here that you can combine the two statements which are given and then figure out what the answer is. Now let us look at some of the standard instructions. The four option instructions are if one of these statements alone is sufficient, if both these statements alone are sufficient, that is you can do it from statement A also and B also alone. You mark three if both statements together are sufficient, but neither is sufficient alone. And if both statements together are not sufficient, 
then what would you mark then you would mark 4 so if I just go back what would you have marked here you would have marked 3 in this case because you are combining both and finding out the answer if I go further back here what would you have marked here you would have marked 4 as the answer because even after combining you were not able to solve you were not able to find out the answer now let us look at the five options well five is if statement a alone is sufficient b alone is sufficient all you have done is the first option is now broken down into two parts e statement alone is sufficient both together are sufficient and the fifth one is when both together are also not sufficient and it is not necessary that these two it will be if it is four options then uh, this will be the set of options it is also not necessary that if it is five options then this will be the set of options it is not necessary but these are the most common types now let us solve a few questions and for these question I am taking the four option rule so let us revisit the four option rule so that you are clear one alone is sufficient mark one both alone are sufficient mark two both together mark three both together are not sufficient mark four keep that in mind and now let us try and attempt the questions okay what is the value of x plus y i have two equations here individually i obviously cannot find them out but i have two equations and two variables so these will be like two lines which will intersect at some particular point wherever they intersect it will give me a unique value of x and a unique value of y so I know theoretically I am not finding it please note I am not finding it I am saying that I know that with both of these combined I will be able to find out the value of x plus y so what will I mark here I will mark 3 as my answer here because after combining the two statements I can find out the answer find out the value that's it do not waste any time on actually finding out the value of x plus y because that is not what the question is asking you the question is asking you just plain and simple determine whether you can find out the answer or not and yes you can by using both these statements and that is why you mark 3 very similar question value of x plus y two equations two variables so this should also be 3 what do you think do you think that this should be 3 well if you think that this should be 3 you are wrong it is not necessary that when you have two equations and two variables you will always be able to find out the answer it is possible that the lines that they represent are parallel lines and they do not intersect anywhere which is the case here see 3x minus 7y is 10 so this can be written as 6x minus 14y is 20 and how about this b can be written as 6x minus 14y is minus 19 so these two will represent a set of parallel lines they will never intersect if they will never intersect you will not get the value of x and y so you will not get the value of x plus y and you will mark 4 as the answer in this particular case how about this what is the hcf of 3 and x the LCM of 3 and x is 12. Okay. So what values of x are possible? x may be 4 or x can be 6 because 3 and no, x cannot be 6. x may be 4 and x may be 12. What is the HCF of 3 and 4? The HCF of 3 and 4 is 1 and the HCF of 3 and 12 is 3. So you are not getting an answer from the first statement. You are getting two answers. You need a unique answer. Let's look at the second one. X is a composite number less than 6. So what all composite numbers are there less than 6? 1 is neither prime nor composite. 2 is prime. 3 is prime. 4 is composite. Is it less than 6? Yes. 5 is prime. And that's it. So the only valid value of X you have is 4 that means the value of hcf that you are trying to find out is 1 that means you can solve it from the second statement alone so what will you mark 
you will mark one. I am going by the four option thing where you can answer the question from one of these statement alone, but not both alone. And if you can solve it from just one alone, there is no need to use the other one. How about this? What is the value of x? From the first one, if you factorize, you will get x as 2 or 3. No unique answer. Cannot solve from the first one. From the second one, you get 2 and 4. Once again, no unique answer. So you cannot solve from b alone. But if you combine the two, what do you get? You get the value of 2 which is common to both these equations. So x is equal to 2 satisfies both of them. And you have found out a unique answer by using both these statements. So if you have found out a unique answer using both these statements, what will you mark? You will mark 3 in this particular case. Let's look at one more. Very similar. Very, very similar. This one gives you x as 2 or 3. This one gives you x as 2. So this means you cannot solve it from the first one. You can solve it from the second one. x square minus 4x plus 4 is x minus 2 whole square. And x minus 2 whole square is equal to 0 essentially leads to x is equal to 2. So you can solve it after by just using the second statement or by using one of these statements alone. So you will mark 1 in this particular case. How about this one? You are getting x is equal to minus 3 here. From the second one, you are getting x is equal to 2. So you can find it out from A alone. You can find it out from B alone. So you are basically able to find out the answer from both of them alone. It does not matter that they are different. I, I, I agree some of you might be thinking that in one case I am getting 3, in one case I am getting 2. Then how do I find out the answer? Well... Is the data sufficient in statement A to give you the answer? Yes, your answer will be 3. Is the data sufficient in statement B to give you the answer? Yes, your answer will be 2. So the data is sufficient in both statement A and statement B alone to find out your answer. So what will you mark here? You will mark 2 in this particular case because the data is sufficient in both statements alone. Both statements alone can be used to figure out the answer. Just couple more just to cement the idea of data sufficiency. Is x a prime number? So what do you get from here? You get x is equal to 2 or 3. You are getting two answers. What do you get from here? x is equal to x square minus 10x plus 24. So that is x is equal to 4 and 6. But please note, the question here is not what is the value of x. The question is, is x a prime number? So with statement A, what can you say? Is x a prime number? Yes, x is a prime number because x is either 2 or 3 and both of them are prime. So you can solve it from the first statement. From the second one, what can you say? No, x is not a prime number. So that is also good here. That is also good enough because from here you can say that x is not a prime number. See the question was is x a prime number? So yes was a valid answer for this. No was also a valid answer for this. So what will you mark here? You will mark 2 here because you can solve it from A alone. You will answer yes. You will solve it from B alone. You will answer no. But the fact remains that you can answer it from both these statements alone. And now for the final one of this particular video. Is point A inside the circle? Okay. The radius of the circle is 10 centimeters. So let's say that this is my circle. I'm sorry for my drawing. And the radius is 10. Well, with this, I can't say anything. I have no idea about what A is or where A is. So from the first statement, I cannot do it. Second statement says point A is at a distance of 20 centimeter from point B, which is on the circle. So if it was any arbitrary circle where point A and B have a distance of 20, 
obviously you will not be able to find out whether a is inside or a is outside but now it is slightly different it says point a is at a distance of 20 cm from point b which is on the circle so let's say my point b is here now point a is at least 20 cm away from b if it is 20 cm away from b wherever it is it can be it will let's say so if it is 20 cm away with b as the center let me draw another circle okay say for example bad drawing but i hope you get the idea this is a circle with a radius of 20 now wherever is a a is on the edge of the outer circle if a is on the edge of the outer circle can it be inside the smaller circle no it can never be inside the smaller circle it might be on the edge of the smaller circle but is point a inside the smaller circle no point a cannot be inside the smaller circle so what will you mark here will you mark 4 here because you are getting a no i am sorry if you think the answer is 4 you are wrong the answer is 3 because you have uniquely determined that the point a is not inside the circle and since you have uniquely determined it you have found out the answer to the question is point a inside the circle by using both these statements by combining both these statements you will mark 3 in this particular case. I hope this would have resolved your data sufficiency queries and I also hope that you liked this particular video. Please provide feedback via Twitter at my Twitter handle at the rate Ravi Handa. You can also suggest and request for more videos via my email ID which is ravihanda at gmail.com. Thank you guys. Thanks a lot for watching.